All right, hello there, THP 494 and 598. So we've done this very exciting thing where we've started out um, first replicating and then building some textures, but how do we actually start to use these two things together? All right, so let's add a component this time, or excuse me, a container this time. So let's add a new container and let's give it uh, maybe like 1280 by 720. Let's give it a nice juicy resolution here. And now we're going to take advantage of both of these things that we've made. So let's dive into our replicator. Let's grab all of this. We'll copy it, move over here to our container, and paste. And we'll grab all these things and scoot it over here a little bit. Let's also zoom in here to our instancing. Let's grab all this lovely work that we've done, copy, move into our container, move over a bit, and paste. We're going to rearrange one thing here with our replicator. Let's go ahead and make this vertical, buy ourselves a little bit of space back. This isn't the way that I like to work because it's getting awfully sprawly and messy, but for right now, so we can see everything jamming together, we'll let it go, we'll let it slide. Okay. Here, all right, so far so good. Oh, we just lost our connection. Boink. There we go. Looking pretty good. Let's plug this guy in. So now we've got our line there also. Uh, let's add an out top. And while we're at it, let's zoom out here and then just set our panels background top to be dot slash out one. So it's just waiting here for us when we move out of here because it'd be nice to have something pretty to look at when we're all done with this. Okay, so what are we up to? We are up to, we want to draw one of these on each one of these rectangles. So first up, we might notice that we need to actually rethink our dimensions here a little bit, right? And this isn't going to be perfect, right? If we really want to do this perfectly, we really might think of this as uh, letters instead of whole words. And for right now, that's going to be, uh, that's a bridge that's maybe like a little bit too far for something that we're going to do here in 20 minutes. Um, you absolutely could do that. Marcus Heckman has a beautiful example of how to do that in the generative design examples. Uh, and I highly encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, for this particular, for the sake of this example, we're going to deal just with whole words. It won't work just perfectly, but it's going to be okay for us for the sake of this example. Okay, so let's think about how we grab this and then use it as a texture. So first thing we need to know dimensions. So we can see here that this has an aspect ratio of 3.2 to 1. So let's head over here to our uh, geo, and let's give this the dimensions of 3.2 to 1, right? If we zoom out here a little bit, we can see that rectangle. Looks like it's going to match the other rectangle. Lovely. They're a little bit too big. That's all right. And our geometry, let's go ahead and use our uniform scale, and then just dial that down just a skosh. Okay, we might have to like scoot it down a little bit more, but that's looking like it's pretty reasonable there. All right, we can work with that. Next on our list, uh, we might also think about, uh, in relationship there to, we might want to have a matching number of columns, excuse me, a matching number of points to the number of rows that exist over here. So let's build that relationship. So here in our line, let's go ahead and for the number of points, let's specify that we want the same number of points that is the operator called null one dot num rows. And we can see here that there's eight rows. All right, so far so good. And we should have that push all the way to eight. Now that might mean that we need a little more space here. So maybe this needs to be more like five or maybe 5.5. Right, we've got to do like a little bit of noodling to try and figure out what all this means. And our camera's gonna probably have to scooch back just a little bit and maybe 2.5. Is the sweet spot for us. All right, that's pretty all right. Okay, so we're we're making progress here. Um, we still need a few more things. So then, how do we think about grabbing all of these textures and then using them on their corresponding rectangles? So to do that, we're going to use the instance two page. So in the instance two page, we're going to specify the textures that we want to instance, and then we're going to specify the index for this. So we're going to do some pattern matching here. So we're going to say that we want to use item, and I'm using item because if we look at over here, that 
sure enough, our replicants all have the name item. They all start with item, right? Item 0, item 1, etc. So we want item, and then we can pattern match with brackets 0 through 7. And it should go all the way down to 7. Excellent. So now we're going to use those as our images. Now, so far we're just using that first one again and again and again, and why is that? Well, we need to actually specify an index that matches when we use different textures to our points. Right? So I need to know when do I use item 0, when do I use item 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And so to help out, we're going to go ahead and specify that our texture index is index, this particular column. So now we're getting much closer. Now, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Is it working? Except we've got a little bit of like funky alpha going on here. So let's view this. Let's scooch this down and let's keep it displayed so we can see what's going on. And here in our constant, what we need to do is we need to turn on blending transparency. Excellent. And that should just about solve our problem there. We still have a couple errors over here and our depth test, right, is going to fix that. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. So now we've got this really quite lovely uh, noisy line that we're drawing that we've got a piece of poetry that runs along. And in fact, if we run our switch, we should even be able to see this change. Right, and we could think about um, if we were being a little more clever, right, we could have a, we could smooth that out a little bit. We might uh, figure out a way to like very quietly or beautifully transition between those two. But for right now, this gives us a nice little starting point. Okay, well, let's think about just a few more effects that we might want to add to this to kind of pretty it up just a little bit. Um, because, you know, it's, it's always lovely to have something that's great and dancing like this, but what can we do to, like, make it a little more juicy? And one thing that we might do is we might think about how do we add a little bit of feedback to this line, but not to the words themselves. Uh, and there's a great way that we could start to actually think about how we might do that. So let's start here with our render. And in our render, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just set this to only draw Geo2. So we're going to draw just the line first. And then while we're at it, we're going to um, go ahead and uh, right click on our line here. Let's insert a render pass. Right? And in our render pass, now we're going to draw everything. That's lovely. But I don't actually want to draw everything in my render pass. I just want to draw Geo1. I just want to draw my words. Oh, right. And I need to clear my depth buffer. And clear to camera color, excuse me, is what I need to do to make that work. Whew. Had a moment there, excuse me. Okay. So now I've got uh, two things going on here, right? I've got this guy that's just my dancing words. I've got just my dancing line. Let's take this uh, and let's go ahead and middle mouse click to fork here. Let's do a little bit of feedback. And our feedback is going to want to be a little bit blurry. And then we're going to want to level. It should probably look pretty familiar at this point. We're going to make a little more room here. Let's go ahead and add a composite. And we're going to composite these two things together. We'll use that for the feedback. Let's make sure that we're set to additive. All right. Yeah. That's gorgeous. OK. And then let's go ahead and while we're at it, we'll turn down our opacity just a skosh. Right, we want to leave that up high enough so that it's got a little bit of juicy, ghosty line business to it. And we might also need to turn our black level up like by just a little tiny, tiny smidge. And at this point, if we're to composite those two together, so we put our words on top, we could use an over, 
Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Let's connect these two together so we can start to see it. That's not nothing yet. Uh, let's go ahead and insert a level. And we'll use our this level to just turn down some of the opacity here. So that makes this stuff in the background. We've still got this nice long ghosting effect, but now it's got uh, just a little bit more gray quality to it. It doesn't blow out our words quite so much. All right, and we might even come back in here to our blur, and we might turn our blur up a little bit more to really soften out what's going on there. All right. Again, that's not nothing. That's uh, cooking with gas. And this also means that if we come over here to our cross, we might think about our cross is going to enable us to really move back and forth between just a little bit of movement and a lot of bit of movement. So this starts to really get into some of the more interesting things that we might start to think about uh, in terms of how we start to use both rendering or an instancing when we're rendering and replicating. Right, and there are other ways that we could have solved this problem, but this is one way that we can really draw a very uh, kind of stark distinction between how those two work. One other note is that we could actually encapsulate all of this business, right? Like if we wanted to tidy up our network, we could certainly package all this up. We've done that before uh, to keep it a little more tidy. And we could do some other things to kind of tidy up our network to make it a little bit prettier. All right, so uh, that is a kind of quick overview, huh, hardly quick, but that's certainly an overview of both replicating and instancing and when those two things live in the same world together. All right, so next up, right, we've got one last thing that we talked about last week, and that was the table comp. So we're going to pull apart the table comp. We're going to dig into that bad boy just a little bit and start to understand a little bit more how that thing works and how we can start to exploit it and use it in a really interesting and novel way.